الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها المدثر قم فانذر صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم honorable brothers in islam mothers and sisters listening at home when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hazrat adam alayhi salatu was salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the malaika the angels that i am going to create a creation a makhluq which will be my khalifa the term in the quran that has been used is khalifa wa id qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings insan this honor that allah has made human beings his own representatives that we are representing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and when you are representing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is also honor given to you and also a great responsibility so that we show complete obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so generally all of insaniyat human beings have been given this title that we are khalifatullah we are representing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to worship the one god but as for this umma the umma of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have a double responsibility we have a double responsibility we are also khalifatullah but because rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is khatamun nabiyyin before rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam what would happen that when one nabi would leave another nabi would replace him even if it was after a period of time but another nabi would come so the responsibility was actually taken by the prophets but this umma this umma has a great responsibility because rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is khatamun nabiyyin and there is no nabi that will come after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam So what is the responsibility that is given to you and I and everybody here as an ummah? Look at the basics first my respected brothers so we understand. Islam is the five pillars. Islam is the five pillars. The first pillar is shahadat la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is connected to your aqida, your belief. This is connected to your akida the rest of the four pillars are connected to amal actions your namaz your roza and your zakat and your hajj everything is to do with amal when we look into these obligations very important pillars in islam if we look into salah when was salah made farz when was salah made farz salah was made farz approximately around 
11 years after Nabuwat was given to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many years? 11 years. Approximately 11 years after Nabuwat was given to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then came Rosa, fasting. Fasting was made for approximately 15 years after Nabuwat. How many years? 15 years after Nabuwat. MashaAllah. And then came Zakat. Zakat was for approximately 17 years after Nabuwat was given to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For my, for my revered brothers that are here, some of these terms, Nabuwat means prophethood, when prophethood was given to him. So, zakat was given when? 17 years. Sorry, it was made first. And then the last pillar, which is Hajj. Hajj around 19 to 20 years after Nabuwat, that this was made an obligation. So now we understand this much. So we understand that Islam is the five pillars. And now we understand the farziyah, the obligation, when each farz became obligatory. But let us understand, my respected brothers, there is one duty that was given to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and given to his followers that was never ever delayed from the first day of Nabuwat, from the first day of Nabuwat, when this responsibility was given to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was applicable also to the followers. From the very first day. And this is my responsibility and ye- your responsibility. Our Ustad would say, Agar tumne ye kaam nahi kiya na, to maar khaoonge. Kya? Agar tumne ye kaam nahi kiya, to kya karoge? Maar khaoonge. <laughs> Leave it in Gujarati or Urdu is better. Just try and, Don't translate this, you know. We live in a very funny world, you know, nowadays. And it is the truth. If we are not going to do this responsibility, boy, this ummah is in trouble. This ummah is in trouble. And which is this responsibility? It is in a very famous chapter of the Quran. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anzir. O muddathir, as in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wearing his uh, chadar mubarak. Stand, warn the people, invite the people. What did he say? This invitation, da'wat, ad-da'i ilallah. The Quran says, O Muhammad, we have sent you as who? Wada'iyan ilallah. You are a da'i. Wada'iyan ilallah. Bi'idhnihi wa sirajam munira. This responsibility of da'wat inviting humanity towards Allah. Those who are not the Khalifa and who are supposed to obey Allah and who are not, it is the responsibility that you go to them and you talk to them and bring them. Whether they accept, whether they don't accept, leave that. But you do your works. Your your work, the syllabus that is given to you, you have to do and your ummah has to do. Imagine namaz was farz with delay, zakat with delay. Hajj with delay, Rosa with delay, but Dawat inviting the non-Muslim community to Allah without delay. What is it? Without delay. This tells you how important this work is. This tells you how important this, this work is. But, Unfortunately, we don't understand the importance of this work. And you know why we don't understand the importance of this work, my respected brothers? It is because we don't understand 
the value that Islam has given to certain actions. So I will give you an example. One is the sunnah of Fajr Salah. What is it? Brothers, I'm, I'm going to go very slowly so you understand. One is the sunnah of Fajr Salah. How many sunnats are there in Fajr? Two. Two. MashaAllah. One is the sunnah of Asr Salah. Asr. Fajr, Zohar and Asr. How many sunnah is for Asr Salah? Four. Four. Okay. Now if I was to ask you, are you going to miss your Fajr two rakat sunnah? Huh? Generally, we take the Fajr to Sunnah like Farz, don't we? Yes. Isn't that the case? Even if Namaz has started, we will read where the foyer is outside, two rakats, and then come and join the... Why, why have we attached this value to the Fajr Sunnah? Why? And we have not attached the same value to the Sunnah of Asr. Am I right? So Asr Namaz, maybe you might not want to... You are here early and you haven't prayed. And you don't even feel guilty about it. It's okay, you know, you might be doing something, Tasbih, Wagera, but you've left it. Because you know the Mas'ala. What is it? You know the Mas'ala. You know and you have been taught that the Fajr of... The Sunnah of Fajr is so important... That it is the most important sunnah of all the sunans. And asr is ghair mu'akkad. What is it? Ghair mu'akkad. Ghair mu'akkad means that at times Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would miss that sunnah. There have been times when he has missed it. But as for the two rakats of fajr, he has never missed it. He has never, he has always prayed two rakat sunnah. So much so that what he would read in the two rakats of Fajr Sunnah, that is also recorded. That he would read, Kul Ya Yul Kafirun and Kul Huallahu Had. This was his habit. So the ulama have put in front of us a lot of emphasis when it comes to the Sunnah of Fajr. Why? Because in his entire life he was doing this. What was he doing? Doing this. Now imagine my respected brothers... If we value this Fajr to Rakat Sunnat so much, why? Because? Why? Because this was the, the practice of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would always read it. Then imagine the level of giving dawat. In his entire life, he never missed an opportunity to give dawat. He never missed an opportunity to give dawat. So why is it that in our hearts the importance of inviting the non-Muslims to Islam is not there? Why? Why do we take this lightly? Why do we take the Fajr Sunnah to be very important but this Amal to be very lightly when from day one the Quran says Kum fa'andir, no stopping for you. In fact, the Quran says, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَدْ There is not even a second of time that is given to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever you find yourself free, importantly do your work. This فَانْصَدْ, go and talk to people. Talk to them, invite them. Now this was the mansab, the responsibility that Allah has given you and I, but we have forgotten it. Who has taken this out from this ummah? Who? Shaitan. Who, bhai? Aray, bhai, is thake huye. Why thake huye? Shaitan. Who? Shaitan. Shaitan works. He knows he's a master. He knows how to work. He has made people busy in everything. He knows this we should not do. So for an example, you have your school. The headmaster is there. A new teacher comes along. And the headmaster tells this teacher that, look, you know what, uh, in your class you've got 20 students here. And the 20 students, this is the syllabus you teach. What is it? This is the syllabus you will teach.
teach. The teacher said, fine. So you've got about seven months to teach this syllabus and complete this book. Okay. Now the headmaster is doing his work, thinking that the teacher is doing his job. But what is the teacher doing? The teacher is teaching the children how to drive a car, for an example. Or he is teaching them something else. And he's saying to the students, you know what, no, no, driving a car is also very important in your lifetime. So you must know the laws of the roads and this you have to do and this you have to do. So basically he was teaching them everything but the syllabus. Now at the end of the year, the headmaster comes and now, you know, there's a test, exams, hoping that the children will have a good mark because we expect you have taught them the syllabus. And then the children say that, you know, we have not even touched the book. Now, what would you call that teacher? A waste of time, isn't it? So the syllabus that Allah has given to this ummat, not to Maulana, not to Hafizab or Qarisab, no, no, no. To every single person of this ummah, this is a syllabus given to us. Every woman, every child, everybody, every one, hundred percent, this is our syllabus. If you are not going to be doing this syllabus, then get ready. Pahli mar dunya mein lagegi. Then kabar mein lagegi. Then maidan hashar mein lagegi. Or then in akhirat. Allah save us. If we are not going to do this, because you see, when you are connected to someone who is the greatest, the greater the person, the greater the responsibility. So our connection is with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our duty is also very high. And if we are not going to do this duty, it is going to be very, very detrimental for us. And so I will give you a few examples, my respected brothers, for us to understand. Now just to give you an example, that person who fights in the path of Allah, for an example, you know, you've seen that uh, sometimes uh, there is a war and uh, in there somebody dies and we say he is shaheed. What do we say? Shaheed in the path of Allah. He is shaheed in the path of Allah. So for an example, if you go back in the 80s, there was a war, Afghanistan, and Russia, Afghanistan and Russia. So the Afghans and the Russians were fighting. <coughs> so a lot of the Afghans that were fighting in that war with the Russians, that was jihad. What was it? Jihad. jihad. So anybody who was made shaheed, so these were the people known as shuhada and shaheed. So this is the term that we use. Funny enough, now even the Hindu community uses the term Shaheed, which I still don't understand <laughs> where they stole this word from Shaheed. You know that, ye hamara Shaheed. This is a term that is found only in the Quran and Hadith. What is it? This is a very unique term that is given to the people of Iman, Shuhada. But a lot of the other people have a habit of using it and borrowing it. No problem, chalo khair, they use it, they use it, but that's... A different topic. When in reality, when a person who has passed away in the path of Allah, if you are going to give him a term, you say, Maktul fi sabilillah. What is it? A person who died in the path of Allah. So he is qatal, he is maktul. That is how he has been, you know, killed. So he is maktul. But, subhanallah, a complete different title shariat gives. Shuhada. They are shaheed. Now, what does shaheed mean? There are a lot of meanings to shaheed, but one meaning that I'm going to talk about that the ulama have explained, this is one reason why shaheed is given to him this name. Shaheed means that he is a witness. What is he? A witness. Shahadat means to be a witness. That is why when a person becomes a Muslim, we say kalmai shahadat, the testifying kalema, the testifying kalema, 
Shahadat. Shahadat means witness. So this man who died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the honor that he has shown the world, he sacrificed his wealth and he sacrificed his life and he has become a witness to this. What has he become? A witness. Now you will understand furthermore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and I a title in the Quran that we all are shaheed. What are we? And the plural is also shuhada. The plural is shuhada. So we are all shuhada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And Allah has made this ummah an ummah that practices moderation. What is it? You'll find some religions in which the priest can't marry. The priest can't marry. But in Islam, you can marry. In Islam, you can marry. Alhamdulillah. So everything in Islam is in moderation. Very beautiful moderation that you see. There is no such thing as extremism in Islam. Nothing at all. This is all the false propaganda. These are people who have an agenda. These are people who sadly have not educated themselves towards Islam. So the Quran is saying this ummah is an ummah that practices moderation. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ Here, shuhada. So that all members of this ummah are shuhada upon the people. What are they? Shuhada upon the people. So you and I are witnesses for the people. What are they? Allah is saying you and for this ummah only, you and I are witnesses for the people. Now how is this? How are we witnesses for the people? Just to give you a few examples, give you one example so that we understand. On the day of Qiyamah, someone who is not a Muslim from Leicester, the angels will say, well you haven't got Iman and you haven't got Islam, therefore you can't enter into Jannah and you will go to Jahannam. So he will say, justice should be given to me. So he will say, I want to put my case forward. And I will say that, look, you know what, nobody actually came to me to talk to me, that I have to be a Muslim, that I have to be a Muslim. Nobody actually came to me, nobody said to me about Islam. And... He was living in Leicester. So the angels will say, okay. So nobody came to you and nobody told you about Islam, okay. So then the records will open up. So it will be looked that this person was working in a call center. Example, eh? Example, call center. And next door to him was one Muslim working. And in his department, there were 15 Muslims. How many? But yet this person is claiming that nobody came to me to talk about Islam. And Allah gave a title to this ummah that you are witnesses upon all of humanity. So you've been working at a call center for 20 years and you have had a person next door to you who was a Muslim and Ten more guys that were Muslims, but none of them spoke to you about Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, stop this man. We want to hear his case. Let us see that if this man is speaking the truth. So you are saying, Suleiman, Abdullah, Yusuf, and Aisha, none of them spoke to you about Islam. And he'll say, no, nobody spoke to me. We were speaking about Liverpool, Leicester, money, Brexit, TV programs, music, dancing, parties, new clothes, very sale, who is going out with who. We were talking like that only. But nobody talked to me about Allah and His Rasul or the Quran, nobody. So the angels will quickly look into that immediately. 
it will be noted that yes, despite the fact that there were five to ten Muslims in that office, none of them came to this young man to talk to him about Islam. Then those five to ten people will be uplifted in the court of Allah and they will be judged. What will they be done? They will be judged. Ye nani ma ke halwe nahi hai mere azizo. You know, you people might think, what is this Maulana you are talking about this all the time? The problem is we don't study the Quran, we don't know the Quran. That's the problem. We don't open the Quran. We don't know what is Islam. And so, how can you just allow one person to go to Jahannam when Islam is so accessible? How come nobody was talking to this chap, this person here? Nobody spoke to him about Islam. Even if a man came to him for one minute and said to him, my brother, you know what? You want to come to my mosque? Have you heard of Islam? Do you know the Quran? Are you tired? Are you depressed? Are you suffering? What about another? You know, subhanallah, nowadays they say that, you know, they are spreading promiscuity. What are they spreading? So they say a man and a woman when they get married, so this type of relationship is one type of living. What is it? There is an alternative way of living too. Abhi knows the alternative way. Subhanallah, look at the words, the narrative they use, so fantastic, alternative way. Alternative way. <coughs> Just like you'll find that if you speak about Israel, <coughs> they don't have to prove anything. All they say, anti-Semitism. One word, bas. And that, that person now has to come out from this hole of anti-Semitism. Allah give a long life to Mahathir. The leader of Malaysia. What is he? The leader of Malaysia. And we need great leaders. MashaAllah. Allah give him a long life. Very intelligent man. So we are not saying for one minute that we are against this race of Judaism and the Jews. No, no. We respect the Jewish community. And in fact, I even said in my bayan that when I landed at um, Tel Aviv, in my Juma bayan, I said... None of them, no one gave us any taklif. And we were expecting, oh, you know what, it will be very difficult, but no. In a very professional, very nicely we were treated. Very nicely. So we are not against any community or any group of people. We are only against zulm. What is it? Zulm. Zulm, oppression. Be it with Muslim community, be it with the Hindu community, be it with the Christian community, be it with the Sikh community, be it with the animals of this world. Oppression is not jais. A person needs to speak when something is wrong. That is what Islam teaches us. We are not against a group of, we haven't got an agenda, right? We are there, we are well wishers. We are the children of one man, that is Adam alayhi salatu was salam. We are all related, interconnected people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then see and find out that did anyone speak to him? If anyone did speak to him and make, made an effort, then he will be saved. His skin will be saved. But if nobody made an effort, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. That person, whatever happens will happen, but even that person who's got iman, he will be in trouble. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you are an ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa There is no nabi to come after him. And I made you an ummat and that you are a shuhada. What are you? Shuhada. You are a witness. So that on the day of qiyamah, everybody will say, yes, we are witnesses to each other. They all came and spoke to us about Allah and His Rasul. They all came and they spoke to us about Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this duty, my respected brothers, is something that is very, very important. But five minutes speaking to him. Now, if he, if he says to you, you know what, can you mind your own business? I'm tired. You know what? I'm not going to have this. I'm going to complain about this. This is against my work ethics or whatever. <coughs> then you stop. What is it? You stop. You don't have to. Islam does not say kill yourself. No, no, no. Even for one minute by you've done your duty, what is it? You have to do your duty, bus. You do your duty, that is your duty. 
And in reality, my respected brothers, Allah is so <coughs> merciful that Allah wants more and more people to enter Jannah. And as we come towards the end of time, the imtihan, the test becomes more difficult. But really the technology at our hand, the one at our disposal, the, the, the technology that we have, it is only benefiting us. You see, oxygen, everybody needs oxygen. Allah has made it in abundance. So now we have Wi-Fi, emails, text messages, WhatsApp messages, so many types of messages, phone, uh, mobile phone, you've got TV channels, you've got radio, you've got all the technology in front of you to spread Islam. What is it? To spread? That is why Allah says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا I am Arhamur Rahimin, and I will never ever punish anyone. Never ever punish anyone. But until they have been exposed to the truth. Until they have been exposed to the truth, and it is up to them whether they accept the truth or whether they don't accept the truth, that is up to them. But people have to, and everybody today can be exposed to the truth because of the technology that we have. But this ummah is sleeping, we are using technology for sins. What are we using? We are using YouTube to watch films and to listen to songs. And we are using the internet to see things which is dirty and not right for us to see. So we are used, so we've become corrupted. We have forgotten this noble mission why we came. What is our maqsad? Subhanallah. Allah give jazai khair to Malana Haq Nawaz Jangwi in Pakistan. He was a master when it came to aqaid. In those early, early days when, you know, for people even to record something was difficult, he would have a condition that he will not do a bayan until it is video recorded. What is it? And he would say in his bayan, what I am saying to you, no Malwis will tell you. Because you people don't have the time to read any books, but at least what I have said, if it is recorded, even if I die, it will be a source of knowledge for people. It will be a source of knowledge for people. So we've got it in abundance. How easy it would be that you have a friend and then you are WhatsApping him jokes and foolish things and stupid things, you know, all these pranks and things like that. You know, sometimes you say, you know what, I've got my friend here and he's not a Muslim, but let me send him, you know, two, three minutes clips of science that proves that there is... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something, it may be subtle, but something to win his heart. Let me take time out to win him. Let me take on a mission. We could have done that. We could have done that. This is our duty, my respected brothers. Now, what da'wat are we going to give? What da'wah are we going to give? The da'wah we give is we are not inviting them or come to Masjid Umar only. No, no. Our da'wat and invitation is that they should accept our deen. What should they accept? They should accept the deen of Islam. Now, one of the reasons why the Muslims today, because of the um, the media and everything that's out there, Islamophobia, you'll find that a lot of people don't like anything about Islam. One of the reasons for that, our ulama have explained, please listen very carefully, my respected brothers, is because we are not doing da'wah. What are we doing? We are not doing the works of da'wah, inviting the non-Muslims. Let me give you one classic example. The more a person gives da'wah, the more the non-Muslims like you. The more you speak to them about Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more Allah will put in their hearts love for you. But we stopped doing that. So what we did, we prayed our namaz, we did our hajj, we did our zakat. Alhamdulillah. And even our tabliq brothers, mashallah, they do great works, but they invited their own Muslim brothers only. 
So that is a separate work. But we've all got our own work that is cut out. And only now and then, you know, somebody might say, oh, can I come in the masjid or do, you know, I want to, so okay, okay, to come in, you know, not, no effort was put inside. That is why for the Muslims today, it is like climbing Mount Everest. And we can't breathe. And we are fighting everywhere. You know why? If the whole ummah decided that, you know what, with love, we are going to invite all of humanity towards Allah, Allah changes the hearts of the people. Now, how? Let me put proof in front of you. We come from India. We come from India. Whether you're from Pakistan or Bangladesh, let's look at India as a whole. In India, the most loved people are the Sufis. What are they? In India, the most loved people are the Sufis. Sufis, awliyaullah. So you'll find that the Hindu community loves the Sufis. What is it? Loves the Sufis. If you look at Indian history, uh, let's not talk about Sahaba, but after that, it is actually the Sufiya e Kiram Ajma'een that introduced Islam in their millions in India. What is it? Like Khaja Mu'inuddin Chishti Rahmatullah Ali, just one example. Mawlana Nizamuddin Awliya. India has, is very rich with Awliyaullah. So, uh, great people. But now if you go to the Mazar, you'll find there are more non-Muslims going there than Muslims. When in reality, the non-Muslims should be hating the Sufis, because it is these Sufis that open the doors of Islam in that area. So why is it that you love the Sufis? Because these were scholars and awliyaullah, they knew that wherever you go, when you do dawah work with the non-Muslim, Allah puts love in their hearts. What does Allah put? Love in their hearts. So this is what we have to do, my respected brothers. This is what we have to do, politely. Now, how do we do it? Dawah is of two types. One is of call and one is of fa'al. One is call and by speech and one is by your Action, speech and action. Jazakallah. Because there are youth here, just give you one example. There is a boy who is studying, say in, in the college, and he missed out a few lessons. And so he asks his friend who is not a Muslim, that can you borrow me your book for the weekend, and I will return it back to you on a Monday. So I can catch up on the work. So his non-Muslim friend gives him the book. This Muslim boy during the weekend, he was not well. He had fever all of a sudden. And he couldn't catch up on the work. So Monday when he went to school, he said to his friend, this is your book, your amanat, this is the book, your trust, I'm giving it back to you. So very casually the friend said, oh, so have you completed the work? Have you completed the work? So how should he answer? He should say that, look, I was not well during the weekend and therefore I could not complete my work. But because I am a follower of Islam, it is my duty to fulfill my promise. What is it? This is how you talk. It is, you bring Islam everywhere. It is my duty to fulfill my... Don't say, I'm a nice man, my akhlaq are so good. Me, Muhammad, I'm giving it back to you. Are Allah, why don't talk like that. Don't give credit to yourself. Give credit to the deen of Islam. What is it? And you say, because I am a follower of Allah and His Rasul... So my duty is that when I said I will return the book to you on a Monday, this amanat is given back to you. This amanat is given. This boy will think, wow, what commitment. He might not say anything to you, but he'll go back at home and, and he'll talk to his mother and father. Mom, you know, I've got this man, of, you know, this young boy, brown skin, Muslims, you talk about that the Muslims are bad, this and that. 
But you know, I've got a classmate, a lovely chap, lovely, my good friend. And look at him, he gave me my book back on time. It makes an effect. What is it? Another example. Say you are studying in the college. And in the class there are five to six Muslim students, boys and girls. Your character should be so high. And your character starts from respecting the teacher. What is it? Respecting the teacher. So when Muslims are studying in the college, university or second or junior school or secondary school, wherever. So we should be respecting the teacher so much that the teacher should never say, what are you doing? Why you didn't do this? Get out of the class, stand up, do this, do that or whatever. I don't think they do all that now. And it should be open to the professors and the teachers that you know what? From the whole school, the best students are Muslim students. Why? The respect they show to the teachers. And it should be open to them and you say, this respect we give you is because what is taught to us in Islam. This is how we should be, my respected <coughs> brothers and elders. Now, you are a businessman, a tajir. You know, the first thing, the problem with our Muslims today is we are failures in making promises. What is it? I'll see you Tuesday. I'll call you, don't worry. And you see him after one month. Oh, I'm so sorry. Lousy people. Lousy. Allah Akbar. This is the, this is the, the problem with the Muslim community. They don't value what they say. So if you are a businessman and you have given time to somebody, you have given time to somebody. One way of showing dawat is timekeeping. What is it? Timekeeping. If you are working for a boss and you clock in at work at nine o'clock, you are there at five to nine. That is a manat. What is it? That is Dawat. So your boss who is not a Muslim will think, Oh ho, man, I tell you what. Whatever the Muslims, they don't do khianat. They work properly. They do everything properly. The businesses of Muslim. When you buy something from a Muslim, the garment is free from defect. If there's any issues, they will return the money back to you. They will not cheat you. They will not deceive you. They will not... You know, steal from you, rip you off and say, you know, take a lot of money from you. This should be the slogan. This should be the atmosphere, the environment collectively around the world that no, no, no. The best people to do business with is Muslims. This is Dawat, my respected brothers. This is Dawat. This is how you are going to invite people. Timekeeping is something that is also very, very important. The definition of akhlaq by Maulana um, Abu Hassan Nadwi. He said the minimum level is that you take away discomfort from a person. That is akhlaq. And the highest level of akhlaq is that you put that person in complete ease and comfort, be it a Muslim or a non-Muslim. So much so, he said, even if that is not a human being and an animal, to take it out from any kind of discomfort. So these are the things, my respected brothers, we have to do. This is how we give da'wat. Inshallah, karenge. Now I'll give you some of the stories that I have heard, which affects everybody. There was a brother who came to one masjid for the enrollment of his child. For the enrollment of his child. So, he was saying to somebody else, and there was a group, and I was hearing this. So he said, that when I went for the enrollment of my child, the people who were supposed to enroll and give me information, they were giving me a lot of attitude. What were they giving? A lot of attitude. Giving me cold shoulders. And I am a new Muslim. What am I? And I was a new Muslim. So I took my son and I went home and I said to my wife, is this Islam? What is it? But we thank Allah 
that then he took his son to another madrasa. And he said, when I went to another madrasa, that Muhtamim sahab made me sit. And he says, of course. And he gave me all the comfort. And he says, yes, don't worry. We will look into this. And my son is praying. And luckily that other Muhtamim was so good that now I forget. But I have taken an oath. I will never pray in namaz in that mosque and never go to that madrasa. Now imagine how sensitive things are in the world. Wait, don't look at anybody here. It's not our masjid or anything like that. Why? Why? I'm just saying generally. You know, that's why I don't. When I'm talking as an imam, this is very generalized. Omar is looking at the clock. You're not looking at the clock now. You just look at me. Huh? What I'm saying generally. So this is what he said. Allahu Akbar. So we have to be very careful sometimes by your action at that moment could trigger kufr in a person. Could trigger kufr in a person. Now, there is a grave digger in Bradford. There is a grave digger in Bradford. So a friend of mine, Mahfu Sahib, he's not here, he was telling me. So when I went to sit at Mahfu Sahib's house, um, he was telling me this, that uh, Mahfu Sahib Ajib, you know, there's a grave digger that is in Bradford. And uh, he, you know how, how they say he's a Gora, <laughs> you know, he's not a, uh, not, not, uh, not a Muslim. So he, this grave digger has been a grave digger in Bradford for many, many years. So he says that whenever he sees the Muslim community burying the deceased and doing bid'ah, so this Englishman, the grave digger says, hey, you're doing bid'ah, don't do this. Bida, 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 bida. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do this. <laughs> Can you imagine? He has learnt every adab of how a Muslim should be buried in his own way because that is his job. Now he's thinking Bradford is nearly half of Pakistan is there. Eh? Bradford, Bradfordstan. So it is like all the time they are Muslims. So he decided that let me learn the ethics and you know the adab of how Muslims are buried. And so he says, you know what, I am there to educate the Muslims. So anyone who does anything wrong, somebody does azan, he says, hey, why are you giving azan for? The Prophet didn't give, bida. He's learned this term, bida, 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 bida. So I said to Mahfuz, I said, Mahfuz, wow, 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 Mahfuz, subhanallah. You know, go and give him da'wat. He goes, Maulana, alhamdulillah, I gave him da'wat. I did. But this is our attitude. There are people who know so much about Islam, but yet we don't even... You know, remove that dust and dirt that is there and make this diamond clean. So, Mafusa went to him and so he said, he said to him that, look, you know, my iman in Islam is between me and Allah. How do you know that I haven't got iman? What did he say? How do you know that I haven't got iman? Who are you to judge? How do you know? So we pray Allah gives him iman. The more people go to Jannah, it is better for us because we are all brothers in humanity. So this is something which is very, very important, my respected brothers and elders. This is our work. So the ladies listening at home, you are in college, you are working in an environment of men working, wherever, wherever you are, at an airport, you are sitting with somebody and, you know, he's doing gupshap with you. Take an opportunity and put your slot inside. Talk about Allah and His Rasul. Put your slot inside. Talk about Allah. Take Him on. What do you do? Take on the challenge. What is it? Take on the challenge. Head on. Let's see. Come on. Let's talk about Islam. Us. Whether He listens, whether He doesn't listen. Inna Allah yahdi may yasha. Allah gives hidayat to whom He, at least on the day of Qiyamah, when we stand in front of Allah, at least we are the real shuhada. What are we? We are the real shuhada. How many of us are shuhada here? I don't know. How many people are doing the works? So this dhoka from shaitan, we have to remove it. And we have to start doing the works. My brothers, if we don't do these works, then there is a lot of problems for us. A lot of problems for us, even here in this country. But when we start doing this work, then you close your eyes, it can be Brexit, it can be the Chinese army patrolling the English channel, nothing will happen to you and I. Because what are we doing? We are doing the, the works. And when you do the works, Allah puts the love of 
the people in their hearts. And what is the works? Kuffaro ko dawad dena. Saaf bol raho me. Kisko? The non-Muslim community, we have to give them. Now, I've given you so much proof. The life of Rasulullah. So much information, my respected <laughs> brothers and elders. So that we can understand. It's already 10 past 9. I actually wanted to explain to you one thing, but it will take a lot of time. That there are four types of people. And how when the Quran came, there were different, different groups. But the Quran has got this jazabiyat, magnetic power. That it picked up everybody and gave it Islam. So there were four types of people. From the four types, two get it and two are left out also. This is also good for our information. Maybe if there's another topic relevant, we will cover that. Allah Pa give us all the topic. Allahumma taqabbal minna wa tub alayna inna kanta tawabur rahim. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi wa ahli bayti yajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin.